Aloha and welcome back to Hawaii, the state of clean energy on ThinkTech Hawaii. Getting a plug in for our sponsors, we're sponsored by the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum and the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. And I'm your host, Mitch Ewan. My guest today is my very good friend, Michael Knight. He's a volcanologist and a new author. So today we're going to be talking about Michael's new book, Exploring the Geology of Hawaii. Of a, sorry, Correction of Oahu, uh, and it's a guidebook. And you can see a picture of the um, Volkswagen microwave. And if you look really hard, you can see a little license plate which says magma, which is uh, Michael's uh, license plate yeah. he has on the car, his personal license. So welcome, Michael. How are you? Thank you. Aloha. Appreciate it. Aloha. It's good to be here. So, uh, it's great to have you, and I love your background. That's a bunch of magma in the background. You just walked out of it to come on the show. Yeah, yeah, that was a lava flow in Mauna Loa back in 1984 eruption. Very good. So I, I want to start off, uh, Michael, uh, with you giving us like a top level uh, overview of your book. You know, what's it all about, and uh, how is it organized? And um, I've read it many times. Yes, I really yeah. liked it. <laughs> I have. So. Um, Tell us about your book, top level. Why did you write it, and okay. how, how is it uh, how is it formatted? Well, three and a half years ago, I had a, uh, a friend of mine, a volcanologist uh, professor in Iceland, said no one's written a geology book, a guidebook for strictly Oahu. There's been guidebooks for all of the Hawaiian Islands, but none have have been written that's specific to Oahu. And he said, you're the perfect guy to write it. I said, no way. There's so many other guys that can write it. I'll, I don't think I want to do it. But anyway, I uh, decided it was, a, it was a great idea. And so I started this book. Now it's, uh, it's being self-published through um, uh, a, uh, a self-publishing company called um, um, Lightning Source. And... I just spot, filled out the contract today. Hopefully, it'll be available in fall. It's a large book. It's 375, 78 pages. It's got 350 plus images. Uh, there are drawings, illustrations, maps, and to guide you around the island to look at 39 of the, some of the best geology stops on our island. And let's, it's, let's call it Kat. Let's uh, bring up the next slide. Okay. So this shows how it's divided into four different areas. Uh, we start in, in Southern Oahu, area one, which is Diamond Head, where most people, when they come to Hawaii, they, they, they stay in Waikiki. So it's a great place to start with. And there's 10 stops in this area. And then we're gonna move to East Oahu, which has Hanama Bay and Cocoa Crater Rift System. These are all these young volcanoes, the small volcanoes that have erupted on the surface of these large shield volcanoes that make up the island. And then the third stop is North Oahu, and that starts in Laie and moves over to Sunset Beach, where we're gonna remove the ocean and look at the, at the sea floor there and determine why, see if we can figure out why there's such large, beautiful waves that come in there. And then we'll move over to Mokalaia, uh, and there's a couple of spots over there. There's a climbing rock that's a great place to hike to and see some really good geology there as well. And then the last stop is mainly all of the Waianae Shio volcano, which is the western side of the island. And um, there's some beautiful stops. I always recommend going out to Kaina Point. It's a, it's a bit of a hike. It takes about three hours to get to, but it's maybe going to be uh, one of these uh, national heritage sites. It's it's up for, for view, review for that, and it has some great geology as well. So that's I just of... like to, I just like to make a comment, having read the book myself. Okay. Uh, when it was in draft, is that this is a great guidebook too for going around all these different spots. It's just not all about volcanology and geology. It actually gives you uh, really good advice. You know how to. What kind of clothes to wear? What, how hard the the, you know, the hike is? Uh, what are the dangers? Uh, what are the good things? So, and it's really done and friendly. It tells about the history. You know, some mythology is thrown in there, Adam Pele and all that. So it's a really interesting read. So, uh, so over to you, Mike. Okay. Um, 
Well, that kind of describes most of the book. I kind of designed it so the beginning few chapters, uh, you know, all science has a vocabulary, a certain type of language that you need to, to get up to speed on. So I try to describe in this as easy a term for a layman to understand, as well as a seasoned geologist or maybe a young scientist that wants to learn about volcanics and geology in general. And, and I've taken it that step. And then I begin with these 39 sites and the travel log where you can drive to, you can, you can take a bus to. Uh, you can some sites you have to paddle to. Maybe you have to have a surfboard or a canoe to get out to on some of these island stops. And uh, I've swam to some of them. And then also um, you can bicycle to some of them. I bicycle to uh, some of the some of the ones around Waikiki as well. So that's how it's kind of set up. Okay. On the next slide, I I guess we're going to get into some of the beginning geology. So yeah. Geology, yeah. So what geologists like to do is they like to compare what's happening now to what happened in the past. So we use uh, what we learn about things now to kind of determine um, things that happened in the past and how they are similar. So this is showing, um, it's an illustration. It was actually drawn by Ryan back in 1987. Uh, this is a more up-to-date one. And uh, he used seismic activity below Kilauea to come up with a model of what the, how magma got into the caldera and then flowed along the different rift systems of Kilauea caldera and Hali Mau Mau, which is in, it's the crater inside of Kilauea. Uh, if you've heard anything recently, is was erupting uh, very vigorously and uh 2018 and it started up again in 2020. do you want to ask a question oh uh, no i'm uh, i'm good okay. so far okay so uh back to that slide i just wanted to show that we're showing magma starting at great depth so geologists they they have di different scales sometimes we're on the mega scale this is a mega scale where we're looking from 40 kilometers depth to the surface you know other times we're looking at the macroscopic, which is inches to uh, hundreds of meters, where we're looking at a face of rock, or we're looking at a thin section of cut, thin slice of the rock at uh, 0.03 um, millimeters in size, which is 30, um, I guess that's about 30 microns, which are uh, millions of a meter. And then, and then you can even get to even finer detail and look, use a, a, um, a, a laser where we shoot uh, beams of, of electrons at, at these thin sections. And then we're looking really microscopically at the rock. But this is a mega scale. And what I want to show there is just how, the, how we assume the magma is flowing up from the caldera and then out along these two rift systems, the East Rift and the Northwest Rift. On the next slide, uh, this is a kind of this is a about a thirteen year period. It's, I know it's hard to read, but it shows seismic activity um, from shallow earthquakes down to about four kilometers depth, and where you see the each dot is a hypocenter, and a hypocenter is an earthquake point in the subsurface where the first motion of these seismic activity starts at and you can and these areas that are really dark big areas are really dark over this long period there were a lot of seismic activities and recently in the last few months or so uh, you can have activity where you have uh, hundreds of these small micro earthquakes magnitude two to four max but usually magnitude two to three they're fairly small earthquakes they can be felt but they don't really do a lot of damage and they come in swarms. And these swarms are when the rock is being fractured and the magma is trying to push its way through the rift system along these linear plumbing features that are like blade-like structures that we call dikes. Next slide. So just to give you an, 
kind of a realization for how big these shield volcanoes are. This doesn't even look like a volcano. It, it just looks like a, a mound, of a hill to climb up. But that hill goes up over 17,000 uh, feet. And uh, from the ocean floor, it's 17 kilometers where it's depressed the oce oceanic crust from the sheer weight of this shield volcano. What that is showing there in that view is about a 90 kilometer length of the upper um, part of Mauna, Mauna Loa volcano. So it really doesn't look, but if you try to walk up that hill, it would take you a long time. On the next slide. Uh, so these shield volcanoes are, are formed by dikes and here shows these blade like features that here's two a couple of dikes those those blades are sticking out of the out as rocks those are these kind of vertical dikes that form and they're differentially eroded away where they're stronger than the rock that surrounds them the, the rock has gas bubbles the, the lava flows have a lot of gas bubbles so they're softer easier to erode over these millions of years that Oahu has been formed it's a five, five million year old island uh, if you count all three shield volcanoes that are forming it. And anyway, um, the Hawaiian shields got their name from um, Iceland and where they, the first type of locality for a shield volcano originated from. Um, the next slide, we're looking at a an island, it's called, um, it's an island where there's a dike swarm. It's called Mokunui Island, which means North Island. It's part of the Mokalua Islands off of Lanikai in the Kailua area of, of Oahu. It's over on the East Coast. And what we're looking at is kind of what a rift system would look like if you were, if you were a, a kilometer under the earth, because we've removed the upper kilometer of the volcano, the shield volcano of the Ko'olau, and we're now looking at the plumbing system and these intrusive dikes that have formed. Here we have nearly 85% dikes. So we're right in the rift zone uh, of the Ko'olau volcano. And you can see as, as these dikes are kind of sloping away from each other, that's um, because as new dikes are intruding along this rift, they push away the older um, dikes and they slope towards the center of the, of the rift system. And then in the next slide, here we're looking at a bathymetric map, which is a, a marine topography map where you remove the ocean. And this has been developed over many years of research from various people from Japan and Hawaii that have used SideScan sonar to bounce sonar waves off the seafloor to come up with a map of the seafloor. And you can see Oahu in the middle. And then we have these slides, these large mega slides that have slumped off of the island. And the biggest one is the Waianae slump, which is a continuous slumping over millions or, or hundreds of thousands of years that um, removed a, a large portion of the of that shield volcano, the Waianae shield volcano towards the Southwest. And then in the Northeast, we think that the new Wanu slide, which is a debris avalanche was more of a, a spontaneous, instantaneous uh, event. And that um, removed blocks that were 30 kilometers long, 17 kilometers wide. You can see this block in the upper uh, kind of North, East corner that's it's called the uh, Tundalusa block and it rises about two kilometers off the sea floor. It's been sampled. And these blocks came from the Ko'olau volcano during this slide and would have produced probably a tsunami 100 meters high as the material went out over 120 kilometers from the volcano. So, so that's huge, huge that's landslide. Massive. Yeah. And if we have another one of these landslides, so what the idea is that these volcanoes are sitting on, um, Moore uses the analogy that they're sitting on top of 
watermelons or marbles, both. And these marbles and watermelons act, they're, they're part of the sediment that the ocean floor is covered with. And the volcanoes grow on top of that. So they're like ball bearings that allow when the volcano becomes unstable because of maybe another larger volcano next to it, eventually it, it, it rises high enough and the pressure from the neighboring volcano makes these slides occur and they just come out with tremendous force. They can. Wow. This is a, a cross section across Oahu show, showing the crustal flexure deformation from the weight of the three large shield volcanoes forming the island of Oahu. The Kaina volcano, the Waianae volcano on top of it, which is younger than the Kaina, and then the Kotlau being the youngest volcano of the three. And it's the weight of the mass of these large shield volcanoes is actually depressed and, and bent down the oceanic crust above the mantle. Um, several kilometers, as you can see. And it's, it's not that the mantle is liquid, but that it acts as a plastic hot body and weight actually bends the crust. On the next slide, we'll look at the rift system of the Kotlau volcano, which is on the northeast side of Oahu. And here, um, Dr. Walker in 1987 had measured nearly um, 3,000, a little over, th almost 3,000 dikes. And he estimated that we're over 7,400 dikes, probably making up the shield volcano. And you can see that they form along three different rift systems, one to the northwest, and one to the southwest, and then one to the east. And it shows the caldera complex, uh, which is made up of two calderas, the Kaneohe caldera and the, and the Kailua caldera, which kind of intermix and, and are, are kind of connected to each other to, to some degree, though it's not well understood. And the center of the caldera is the Kawanui swamp. It's just a low-lying area now. Okay, and then in the next slide, um, we're showing the first, first stops, stops four, one through four, which start at Diamond Head, the iconic uh, crater, which is one of these post-erosional volcanoes, that, meaning that it erupted after a major erosional event of the Kotlau shield volcano. And they're very small eruptions, but they were uh, they are water magma interaction as 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 the uh, magma intruded the rock it it ran into a lot of water that was stored in the limestone underneath the um the sediments that were overlying it and th that water caused these very explosive eruptions we call ferrato magmatic eruptions and form uh diamond head crater um, and then we're going to show a cross section in the next slide. And here we show a cross section of uh, Diamond Head Tough Cone. And this was done by Stearns and Vastic back in, in 1935, a long time ago. But they uh, used some drilling information when they drilled some water wells. And they inferred there is one dike in this area that. This was a dike fed eruption. And when the magma hit the limestone area, that white area, uh, those beds that are forming below the surface, there was a lot of water there. And that caused this very eruptive, uh, explosive eruption, we call a pyroclastic eruption. And uh, these phratomagmatic eruptions blew ash probably tens of kilometers into the air and produced surge deposits and tuff and ash that are forming the cone itself. In the next slide, we're gonna move over to um, Hanama Bay, which are more of these younger eruptions. They're one-time events. They don't re-erupt usually. 
Uh, here we're showing Hanama Bay and several stops around Hanama Bay, uh, a beautiful place that anybody that comes to Oahu should see. It's, uh, it has some of the pristine fish resources for uh, uh, coral reef fishes that uh, can be seen in Hawaii and very, very beautiful place to access. This, this eruption here formed uh, two main tough rings, uh, Hanama, um, Hanama Bay is, is one that had two vents associated with it. And then also uh, there's the um, Cocoa Head tough ring, which also formed in this area. And those were both these, these ferratomagmatic, very explosive eruptions produced base surge eruptions. Um, in this area as well. On the next slide, um, this is uh, one of the areas that um, um, most people don't know about, but uh, you can actually climb up this arch. It's uh, an arch formed by the uh, lithified tuff that forms on Coco Crater. Uh, most people take the, um, the, the hike that goes up the up the uh, old um, tramway, uh, but this is a, a much more scenic view. Though it's it's considered a challenging hike and not a not a family hike. It's fairly steep, uh, but gets you right up to the top of the crater, and uh, it's quite quite amazing to take this hike. Uh, and it's shown in in the guidebook as well. And the next slide. Uh, now, this is from the Lanai lookout area below Coco Crater, and it shows the bedded tufts that were erupted from the Kahaloa uh, tuff ring. And this eruption was a wet eruption, and you can see that the layers of ash have actually been deformed as this limestone block was blown out of the vent and traveled about a kilometer and then was embedded into the ash here. And you can see small pieces of coral that are infilling behind this block uh, where it formed the ash beds. And what we ge geologists use is the angle of trajectory to determine where the source area of these type of explosive uh, blocks when they were deposited. Um, in the next slide, We're going to move to the Waianae side of the volcano uh, of, of the island of Oahu. Here on the west side is a very unusual eruption, probably the only uh, of all the Hawaiian islands. It's the most silicic eruption. It's called a Rio Day site. Uh, the the Ku uh, Lei Rio Day site and John Sitton um, named this a uh, uh, lava flow. And it's uh, also a beautiful area to visit. Very unusual. There's no other island that has one of these highly silicic, uh, nearly 68% silica, sil silicon oxide uh, in this deposit. And so it's unusual for these very usually basaltic type volcanoes. And then on the next slide, we show one of the trails up the, the Kamaile Unu Ridge Trail. And this is a, also another beautiful scenic hike that goes up the um, Kamaile Unu Ridge. And this is the, the, the site location for the Kamaile Unu member of the Waianae Volcanics. They hiked up the Hunter's Trail, which is that steep slope on the um, on the kind of the right side of the, the ridge. And that's where they mapped all the different variations in the foliatic basalts and characterized these lava flows as part of the Waianae volcanics. And this kind of concludes most of the picture slides. So here's, here's the last slide. So Michael, uh, this is uh, how, how we contact you. So how do we contact you, Michael? Yes, you can uh, email me at michaeldknight at me.com or you can 
call me if you really want to talk to me directly at 808-349-2243. I'd be glad to talk to you about uh, this book, when it's going to be out for purchase, or if you want to maybe go on a, a individual hike, um, it's possible we could set something up and I could explain the geology in person. That's great, Michael. I, I know that this book was a labor of love for you, and uh, you put a heck of a lot of work in it. It took you, what, three years to write it? Yes. And it's got hundreds of really great diagrams. You just had a, like a little brief introduction to it. It's really well done. It's written for the layman, plus also for uh, new students. So a uh, really great job, Michael. And so we're going to leave it there. Uh, today, we've been exploring the geology of o Oahu with volcanologist Michael Knight. Thanks, Michael. Really great having you. Aloha. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it.